Hey, what is up mortals? It is AC here, and before we get into today's video, there's something I'd like to say. I'd like to let you all know that we have a merch store. Some of the items in it are only available for a limited amount of time, so if you're interested, go into the description and check it out. Each purchase helps us make more content. Secondly, if this video hits 500 likes by the end of the week, we will continue this what if. Thirdly, if you didn't know, only 41.3% of you guys are subscribed to us, so please hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon. Now with that out of the way, let's get into the story. If we are truly to have a fit class representative, then it would be wise that we hold an election. As Ida finished his speech, Izuku was quick to note that Ida had his hand the highest out of all of them. A boy with yellow hair with a black lightning bolt streak in it, Denki Kaminari, was the first to speak up. An interesting suggestion. You really think that will work? Another one of his classmates, a girl with the frog quirk, Suyu Asui, also chimed in. We haven't had the time to get to know each other at all. We can't really make a decision like that so soon. Kirishima was next to voice his concern. Wouldn't most people just vote for themselves? Izuku had to agree with Kirishima's sentiment, finding it hard to believe everyone would vote for another person and potentially give up their chance of becoming the class rep. Ida was undeterred, however. That's exactly why the one with the most votes will truly be fit for the role. Someone who could make that impact in such a short span of time surely has the qualities of a true leader. The class quieted down, seemingly satisfied with the logic. Ida turned to Aizawa to ask for permission to hold the election, who simply said, Just hurry up and decide before homeroom is over. The votes were taken and tallied, and soon enough, Izuku found himself staring at the rest of the class in disbelief, shaking in his shoes. H how did I get three votes? Even though Izuku had won the position, he really didn't expect to get any votes from other people. Who the hell voted for Deku? Bakugo looked absolutely livid. Sero grinned and answered, Better him than you, I'd say. As Bakugo yelled back at Sero, Izuku couldn't help but notice Iraka whistling innocently and looking away from Bakugo. Had she voted for him? Why? Maybe he should ask her at lunch. At the same time, Ida looked pretty upset that he hadn't gotten a single vote. It surprised Izuku a bit, honestly. Ida was a great choice, he thought, but he didn't even vote for himself. Had Ida also voted for him? Eventually, Aizawa called Yao Yorozu and Izuku up to the front of the class. Then, class rep is Izuku Midoriya, and deputy class rep is Momo Yao Yorozu. Izuku could feel his anxiety bubbling up, and his arms and legs began to shake a little bit. He chanced a glance to his side and could see Yao Yorozu looking a little displeased. Most likely, she had hoped to be the class rep over Izuku, who could barely stand in front of class without freaking out. Taking a deep breath, he forced his body to still, and smiled shakily. But thank you for voting for me. I'll do my best. Some of the class smiled and cheered a bit, praising him for his performance from the battle training as Aizawa told the two of them to sit back down. During lunch, Izuku couldn't help the curiosity gnawing at him. He looked over to Uraraka happily enjoying a bowl of rice. E even though I was chosen, I I'm not sure I'm really qualified to be the class rep. It's a little nerve-wracking, honestly. I'm surprised I even got any votes at all. D did you vote for me, Uraraka? Uraraka smiled sweetly. Yep, I really think you deserve it! Ida spoke up as well. Indeed, your courage and quick thinking in critical moments definitely made you worthy of your position. That's why I voted for you, after all. So it was you, Ida. Even though you also won the position. Yeah, I mean... You've even got glasses! Uraraka really does just talk without thinking sometimes, huh? Before Izuku could say anything about it, Ida answered the unspoken question. Just because I desire that position does not mean I am qualified for it. It was merely a judgment call, and I believe I made the right one. For some reason, Ida's grandiose way of speaking caught him off guard. This wasn't the first time he had spoken like that, but now he could focus on it a little more. Ruraka wasn't afraid to ask why, which led to Ida revealing that he was the younger brother of Ingenium. That was so cool! To have a hero for a brother had to be amazing! He hoped he could ask Ida to get Ingenium's autograph sometime. Ida made more comments on how fit Izuku was for the job, but he still couldn't help but feel like he didn't really deserve it. He had nearly collapsed into an anxious mess just standing in front of the rest of the class. How would he handle being in front of even more? As Ida and Ruraka fell into less serious conversation, Izuku pondered the entrance exam. Ida said he had figured it out in reference to the rescue points once on the first day of class, 
and then just now, but he had just gotten lucky. He had done what he felt was right. He hadn't figured anything out. Before he could tell either that, however, an alarm rang through the entire building. Confusion, fear, and panic swept through the room as a voice sounded over the intercom. There has been a security breach. Level 3. Please remain calm and evacuate the building immediately. As the voice repeated, Ida was able to ask a nearby upperclassman about what level 3 was, which apparently meant that someone was trespassing on the school's grounds. Immediately, everyone was beginning to panic and start running. Izuku, Uraraka, and Ida all started making their way out of the lunchroom, but were quickly separated by the massive crowd. All students desperately trying to leave as quickly as possible. It was absolute chaos. People were yelling and pushing, all trying to be the ones to leave first. The, they're so quick, it's causing a panic! Ida attempted to grab onto them, only to be nearly pushed to the floor for its efforts. Izuku was pressed up against the glass by someone's arm, where he was able to see the front gate. Outside! Th those were no villains! It was the press from earlier! To have caused such a panic, he needed to calm everyone down, but how could he get everyone's attention? They would never see or hear him if he was caught up in the wave. He looked around for any kind of way he might be able to get their attention, when Uraraka briefly appeared in his vision. Her quirk! She could float him up above everyone and catch their attention. He waded his way forcefully through the sea of students, feeling a bit bad for pushing, but determined to put a stop to the madness. He managed to get within arm's reach of Uraraka and held a hand out to her. U uraraka M Make me float! Please! Uraraka was caught off guard for only a moment before she complied, just barely able to brush his hand with hers. Instantly, he felt the quirk take effect, lifting him into the air, but it wasn't enough. They paid no heed to the boy floating above them all. He needed to make a commotion, a noise or something. To his front was a wall. If he could hit it hard enough, it would hurt, but he had no choice. Charging one for all throughout his body, he held up his thumb and index finger in a flicking position and channeled 10% of one for all into the two fingers. With the flick, he was pushed back by the force rapidly, slamming into the wall with a loud bang. He felt pain surge through his spine, but ignored the sting, grabbing onto some pipes to maintain his position. Looking forward, all eyes were on him, a momentary pause in the chaos to stare at him. He could feel anxiety ripping through his body. He couldn't do this, not with so many people watching. Breathe. Taking in a gulp of air, he was able to calm himself just enough to yell, Everyone, it's just the press. There's nothing to be c concerned about. Don't panic. We're all students of Yue, and we should act like it. Izuku held his breath, waiting for the reaction. He could see people calming down, and looking out the window to see he was telling the truth. Relief washed over the body of students, and things became much more organized. Izuku allowed himself to exhale and let go of the pipes. He was able to, with another one-for-all enhanced flick, to float closer to the ground, where Uraraka disabled her quirk, running over to help him up. That was amazing, Deku! Are you okay? It looked pretty painful when you hit the wall! Izuku smiled and nodded. It still hurt a lot, but he could ignore it for now. He stood up and looked around, seeing the police outside, and dealing with the media already. They were all let out, and pretty soon, everyone was back in class, everything back to normal. He and Yagyarosu were once again called up to the front of the class, this time to decide the other class officers. Izuku felt nowhere near as nervous as before, standing before everyone, this all paled in comparison to the commotion during lunch. Having dealt with that, this was so much less nerve-wracking, though he still felt nervous about whether he was doing a good job or not. No one said anything, though. Even Bakugo seemed to begrudgingly respect his position. After class, quite a few people came up to him, thanking him and congratulating him for taking control of the situation so quickly. But once again, he had just gotten lucky. He was in the right place to see that there weren't any villains, just reporters, and it was close enough to Uraka for her quirk to help him. Without that, he wouldn't have been able to do anything. But if so many people thought he was worthy of the position, then he would do his best to live up to the expectations. The rest of the day passed uneventfully for Izuku, but the next day, Aizawa had another curveball to throw at them. For today, our hero training class has turned into a class with three instructors. All Might, myself, and another hero will be overseeing your training. Turned into? So they had had something else planned. Did the infiltration yesterday have anything to do with the change? Aizawa-sensei, what are we going to be doing? Sarah spoke up over the murmuring. Disasters, shipwrecks, and anything in between. It's rescue training this time. At that, a couple of people began to get hyped up, talking about how difficult it might be. 
Meanwhile, Izuku couldn't help but continue to think about what Aizawa had said earlier. Just reporters trespassing on school grounds shouldn't warrant that kind of change. Had something else happened? Or was he just overthinking it, and it was just a last-minute change for some other reason? Aizawa interrupted his thoughts, however. I wasn't finished. You can choose whether or not you want to wear your costume, and some of yours may not be suited for that kind of training we'll be doing. Keep in mind going forward that your costumes may not always be helpful, and can sometimes even hinder your performance as a hero. In that moment, Izuku was glad he had gone for making his costume much more practical than flashy. He'd hate to be in a situation where his costume could actively make it hard to defeat a villain or rescue people from a natural disaster. We'll be taking a bus to the site since it's off campus. That's all. Start getting ready. Deku couldn't help but feel excited. Rescue training was the kind of thing he really admired. This was another important step to becoming the greatest hero. I won't let you down, sir. All might. Izuku and his classmates all went to put on their costumes and wait outside for the bus to arrive. When it did... Izuku took a look inside. S seems like it's open seating. Everyone, you can sit wherever you'd like. Everyone walked aboard, and Izuku ended up sitting with Sato on his right and Suyu and Kirishima on his left. After a few minutes, Suyu turned to him. I generally say what's on my mind, Midoriya. Izuku straightened his posture in surprise at being addressed. Y yes, Asui? I'll meet Suyu. Your quirk is like All Might. Uh-oh. That wasn't good. Had she already made the connection? Was he too obvious? Everyone is going to find out! Had he failed All Might and he was going to be super disappointed in him and would want Von for all back and... Midoriya? All y'all right, Ribbit? Tsuyu snapped him out of his panic and he took a deep breath. He just needed to stay calm. I I'm fine, really. Do you really think they're that similar? I mean, lightning comes off my body when I use mine and I can only use a small percentage of my quirk without hurting myself. Tsuyu looked thoughtful at his explanation. I suppose when you get down to the specifics, they are pretty different then. Huh. Sorry for putting you on the spot like that, Ribbit. Yeah, and besides, strength augmenting quirks aren't all that uncommon. I kinda wish I had one. My hardening is strong and all, but it isn't very flashy. Kirishima jumped into the conversation as well, using hardening on his arm as an example. N not at all, Kirishima. I think your quirk is awesome. It's definitely a pro hero's quirk. E you think so? But even so, a pro also needs to worry about popularity. Aoyama was also quick to insert himself into the conversation. My naval laser is both flashy and powerful. Perfect for a pro, right? Ashido also cut in, countering Aoyama's statement. Doesn't it give you a stomachache, though? Aoyama looked visibly put off by Ashido's words. Well, if you're talking flashy and strong, you gotta look at Todoroki and Bakugo. Though Todoroki didn't visibly react to the name drop, Bakugo looked in their direction. But Bakugo is always so bad. I don't think he'd be too popular. That made Bakugo mad, completely proving Sue's point. Shh, what the hell did you just say? You wanna fight? Tsuyu simply pointed to Bakugo. See? Kaminari didn't hesitate to pile on Bakugo as well, making Izuku shake his head in disbelief. This was so different from middle school. Bakugo was being made fun of. This was UA for you, though. There were a few more exchanges before Aizu came in. We're here. Stop messing around. A chorus of, Yes, sir! rang out from everyone, and they were soon off the bus and inside the large dome structure, where a hero wearing a white spacesuit, who he had identified as a space hero, 13, was waiting. Izuku wasn't the only one geeking out, however. Uraraka nearly squealed in delight, stating how much she loved Thirteen. Was she Uraraka's favorite hero? Thirteen ushered them into the entrance, where Izuku could see the multitude of zones for rescue scenarios. It reminded him, in a way, of Universal Studios Japan. Thirteen introduced the zones, and the overall purpose of the rescue center, named the Universal Simulation Joint. It's even got the same acronym. Aizua walked up to Thirteen, and asked about All Might's absence. In response, Thirteen whispered something and held up three fingers. Had All Might gone over his limit? Aizawa simply sighed and turned back to the class. How irrational. It can't be helped, though. Let's begin. But first, Thirteen has some things to say. Thirteen delved into an explanation, but Izuku couldn't help but focus on the sense of dread that hung over him. What had happened earlier that day... As Izuku was just leaving his house to get to Yue, he felt a hand on his shoulder. Turning around, it was Sir! 
Sir had an even more serious than usual expression on his face, making Izuku nervous. Midoriya, be careful today. Make sure to be prepared. That was all Sir had said before he left, but it was enough. Sir very rarely gave such warnings, and Izuku had never seen his face so... grave before. It spooked him quite a bit. He shook his head and made sure that he had everything once again before leaving. His thoughts were interrupted as the lights around the USJ flickered, and Izuku's heart sank. This was it. This was what Sir had warned him about. He steeled himself and tightened his fist as a dark purple mist formed at the base of the sensor fountain. It exploded out, dozens of villains walking calmly out of the portal. Stick together and don't move. Thirteen, protect the students. What's that? Is this like the entrance exam where it's already started? Kirishima started to step forward, but Aizawa yelled again, Don't move. Those are real villains. Everyone gasped and froze, even Izuku. Aizawa put on his goggles and got into his fighting stance. Izuku could only stand, frozen in fear, as he felt the villain's gaze bearing down on them. Thank you all for watching the video to the end. Now there are a few more things that I like to go over before the video ends. On behalf of We The Celestials, I'd like to thank the writer of this video and editors for this video. Their details will be in the description. If you're a voice actor, editor, or writer, or you're interested in becoming one of those, go to the Discord that is in the description of this video and hit up the head of one of those areas. We're always looking for members to join us. That's it from us for today's video. So thank you all for watching, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're interested, and hit that like button if you like the video. Until next time, peace out mortals, have a fantastic day!